Ahmed of Saudi Arabia at the White House, his hosts uh, trying to reassure him one day after Barack Obama got confirmation that he has the votes to override a congressional veto of the Iran nuclear deal. Let's cross to correspondent Philip Crowther. What is the latest on that score? Well, we do now know that that Iran nuclear deal will go through, despite just a few minutes ago, another key uh, Democrat in the Senate coming out against the Iran deal. And this, though, is, of course, a crucial foreign policy victory for Barack Obama. And it is a loss for the visiting king of Saudi Arabia, King Salman. He would much have preferred for the United States not to have this rapprochement, not to come up with any deal uh, with Iran. Iran is the big foe for Saudi Arabia, as it is uh, for Israel at this point. And that is why this is about reassurances on behalf of Barack Obama and on behalf of the White House uh, during this visit of King Salman uh, to Washington. They will be discussing that nuclear deal. And as is often the case when two countries don't get along, especially when it involves the United States, well, they can always help that little bit with some military support. There will be more military support, not necessarily announced here today, but we know there will be more from the United States for Saudi Arabia, both in the fight against the Islamic State organization, where Saudi Arabia is part of the U.S.-led coalition, but also in the military fight that Saudi Arabia is currently waging in Yemen. Uh, you mentioned Yemen. Uh, that air campaign against Iran-aligned Houthi militias uh, Washington has been slowly, though, Philip, raising concern about civilian casualties, it seems. Yes, yeah, slowly but surely, but not necessarily in public in front of King Salman of Saudi Arabia. We've just heard from both leaders in the Oval Office. They gave some opening statements before their meeting there, and there was no mention uh, from Barack Obama of any civilian casualties in Yemen. This might be discussed uh, in private. Uh, that we uh, don't know yet. We might find out at the end of this meeting in uh, a few minutes' time. Uh, there is timid support on behalf of the United States for this Saudi Arabia uh, air campaign against the Iran-backed Houthi rebels uh, in Yemen. There is some financial support and some military support there as well. And this shows the complexity during which these two countries are meeting. These are Iran-backed rebels that they are fighting partly together uh, in Yemen. Of course, Iran is the country that the United States is getting closer to with the Iran nuclear deal. And that is the main worry for Saudi Arabia. And that is certainly the main part, the main criticism that will come from the Saudi delegation today here in Washington. All right. Many thanks uh, for that. Philip Crowther reporting from uh, Washington. And to the number 38470. Again, 38470. Text the word Levin. Just text LEVIN to 38470. That'll give you information on what he has going on. Our next guest is a friend of yours, a friend of Freedom's, and a friend of mine, Mark LEVIN. Thank you, thank you for coming, except for those malcontents over there. We're here to tell the world that we, the American people, reject the cowardice and surrender by our government to the genocidal terror regime in Iran. We are here to tell the world that we, the American people, are more resolute than ever. We are more resolute than ever to destroy those who threaten a wage war against us, our society, and our ally Israel. This enemy makes a grave error in confusing the appeasement of a president and a Democrat party and the capitulation of a Republican Congress with the strength and fortitude of the American people. Never before has a president of the United States, never before has a political party consented to funding and arming the enemy Never before has a president entered into agreements with a terrorist regime 
that holds Americans hostages, that has killed and maimed thousands of American soldiers, and that seeks nuclear weapons and ICBMs to attack his own country. Barack Obama makes Neville Chamberlain look like George S. Patton. This phony deal allows the Iranian terrorist regime to inspect its own nuclear sites, to continue uranium enrichment, to build advanced centrifuges, to perfect their ICBMs, to spend $150 billion on terrorism, and in the end, to secure nuclear warheads. And as one Democrat after another, one conga line of Democrat after another, supports this surrender, it's clear that the Democrats no longer represent the party of Harry Truman and John F. Kennedy. It's now the Democrat Party of Bill Ayers, Saul Alinsky, and Barack Obama. And the Democrat Party will have blood on its hands as a result of this deal for the rest of time. And let me be clear, this deal sows the seeds of war. The enemy is emboldened. And the enemy will be well armed and seek regional and world domination. How do we know? They told us so. Well, what are the Republicans? The Republicans. The Republicans control that building behind us right now. You see that scaffolding up there? They should take some of that and use it on their damn spines. The Republican Party, particularly the leadership, has abandoned the Constitution and the treaty power of the United States Senate. It is recklessly and deliberately avoiding any serious confrontation with a disastrous imperial president. They can stop this. They can invoke the treaty clause right now. They can suspend the filibuster rule and vote against lifting sanctions right now. They can stand between Obama and the Iranian terrorist regime and protect our nation and our allies. But they won't. Gone is the party of Dwight David Eisenhower. Gone is the party of Ronald Reagan. Instead, we get the party of McConnell and Corker and Boehner. <laughs> Tell the Republicans, this is not about getting along with Obama. It's about stopping Obama. It's about Americans' interests. It's about our children and the future generation. And a final word. Let me warn the seventh century throwbacks who like to chant death to America in their home country. We Americans have been threatened better by better than you. We Americans have been threatened by forces far stronger than you and we've obliterated every damn one of them. The American people do not stir quickly. USA. USA, 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 And so they can hear us. In Tehran, the American people do not stir quickly.
but when we do stir, you will regret it. <laughs> Tell the Republicans in Congress it's time to step up, enforce the Constitution, and stop this fraudulent deal. <laughs>